Just want us to start by taking just a moment to appreciate the presence. So often we stand here and the presence of God falls. And you can feel the weight of his presence. And it's taken a moment just to acknowledge that. Mm. Psalm 91 verse 1 that we've all heard so many times recently. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 27 verse 5 For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. Are we in a day of trouble? He will conceal me under the cover of his tent and he will lift me high on a rock. And there's such a peace and a safety when we read those words and let them wash over us. There is a safety in being hidden and he continually promises to hide us. He doesn't promise to take us out of the trouble we're in continually, but he does tell us he will hide us. We look at children when they're frightened or they're scared, they run to their parent, their caregiver, and they hide for safety. Psalm 32 verse 7, you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. So he doesn't just hide us. He takes action against that which surrounds us. We often talk about the secret place. And secret, it means unseen or unknown by others. And our natural instinct, that's to retreat from danger or harm when there's a threat, when there's pain, when there's anything that's discomforting to us, we automatically react by trying to remove ourselves from that. But depending on who we are and where our trust lies, where do we remove ourselves to? And I spoke to God about this. We retreat when we're anxious, scared, stressed or in pain. And what we saw during this time that we're living through right now is often the places where people retreated to were inaccessible. So whether it's to the gym, whether it's to spend time with friends, whether it was even to meet together in church, people's safety, their go-to, their comfort was removed. And I just felt like God was asking, where, where do you seek comfort from? And when we look at secret, thank you. When we look at secret, often it has this negative connotation to it, when really it just means that it's unseen or unknown. It's not open for public viewing. And that's where we meet God. That's where we have our safety is in this unseen by everybody else place. And it tells us that throughout the scriptures when it talks about us being hidden under the shadow of his wings. That's a close relationship. That's a connection there. You can't, you can't hide under somebody's wings if they don't have relationship there. And deep relationship is grown and developed in the secret place. The truest we will ever be to who we are is when nobody's watching. It's in that secret place where there's no audience, where your audience is God, is your true being. Often in our house, we talk about integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing when there's nobody watching, when there is no reward 
integrity is doing right in the eyes of God without having other people witness that. And we meet God one-to-one -one in the secret place. And we're away from outside influences, outside pressures. There's no performance in that meeting with God. There's such a safety that you can go to him in that one-to-one. -one. It's where you have intimacy develops in that place. You think about when you're, when you start dating, it's one-to-one. -one. To get to know somebody, you spend time one-to-one -one with that person without, I mean, women are particularly bad for everybody having an opinion on the one you're dating and what they think. So you, ha you have that one-to-one -one without outside influence because that's where it develops. We create soul ties and we, good soul ties, and we bond with those that we spend time with. It forges relationship. And the more time we spend with God, the more it strengthens and develops that relationship. We read about him through the word. That's getting to know him. Today's version is Facebook stalking. Who have they been with? What did they do? Who were they talking to? What did they like? What are they into? And we need to learn who God is to develop that relationship. It's not good enough to know about somebody. You need to know God. You need to know who he is. We don't trust who we don't know. You wouldn't entrust something to a stranger that you don't know if it's valuable to you. James 4 and 8 talks about draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So that tells us that when we do that, when we go to that secret place, when we go to connect with him on that one-to-one -one basis, he connects back. That's a two-way thing. That's relationship. And so often we have conditioned ourselves when something goes wrong to go a certain way. Even behaviorally, we have behaviors that come out when we're stressed or when we're anxious. They come out of us. You hear phrases come out of your mouth that you've conditioned yourself to say. You can be, you know, that's, you could have aggression or you could have, you know, will you retract? There's so many ways that we protect ourselves. And God asked me when I was studying this, where does flight take you? King David is one of my favorites. And his automatic reaction was to run to God. He asked his advice and his guidance in battle before he went in. Do I even go into battle? Do I chase them or do I not? And we look at the history of David. I mean, he had an affair, got her husband killed. You think about that in today's terms. Can you imagine what the media would do to him if he was in a position of influence? But despite all of his sins and all of his shortcomings, the Bible describes him as a man after God's own heart. And that's what God saw because he saw what David said and did in the secret place, both good and bad. And the good created that relationship with God. We see, I've often talked about how this has been a perfect opportunity for Matthew 6 and 6. It says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So pray to your father where people can't see you. And where people don't see you, God will, and he will hear you. That's where we find out who we serve. That's where we find out who we trust because it's who we are in that place without audience. We behave differently in different spheres, in different areas. You behave differently in work than you would at home, mostly because there's probably some things would be unacceptable in the workplace that you do at home or the way you behave at home. And we have to ask ourselves, are we driven to God in the secret place or are we driven to someone or something else? Now, when we're young, we need our parents and we need that 
safety and there is absolutely nothing wrong with human comfort. It's God's design to move in unity and God commands a blessing. We see that. Psalm 133, I think it is. But when we go to someone or something for comfort, that should always lead us back to God. Our comfort shouldn't end with that person. It shouldn't end with that thing. Yes, we can get relief, in my case, with a good cup of tea. <laughs> nice mug of tea does me the world of good. But a nice mug of tea sitting in my favourite chair with the word of God around me and soaking music playing where I can... Because at times we do need a bit of help. It's not always easy to sit down on your own with no worship music or no word to try and get your place, your head into that place where you, it can turn off and you can get into the presence. So whatever it is should always lead us back to God. It should always lead us back to that secret place. Even when I was out walking through lockdown, out walking big long walks to, you know, they say about walking to clear your head. But I found in those walks that I had some great debates with God. <laughs> I've yet to win one. But I found that even when I was doing, when I clean my house, the cleanest my house will ever be is when I'm angry. <laughs> because I decide that I have all this energy and all this upheaval happening in me and I think well I'm going to put it somewhere so Stuart knows when he comes in and the house is clean that he's probably better just going back out because there's a reason why it's clean but I find when I'm cleaning that I have such an appreciation for what God's doing in my life and I'm cleaning the microwave or I'm cleaning the kitchen and I'm realizing that I have a kitchen to clean I'm realizing that I have the never ending washing basket because I have children who wear so many clothes. I realize that I have to go on a hunt through the house to find the washing because I have family in my house that look like they've evaporated and their clothes is all that's left behind. And I talk to God about this and he completely shifts my attitude as him and I meet in the secret place. He shifts my attitude instead of rah, 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 I have all this to do to thank you God that I have all of this to do because it's in the secret place and that place of intimacy that he can talk to us deeply and profoundly. Psalm 54 verse 4, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. And that, that verse alone, he is my helper. Everything else, everyone else is bonus material. The Lord is my helper and he is the upholder of my life. And I know there's not just me standing here today that can lift their hand and say, I am here because of God. Everybody's here because of God, but you wouldn't have been born. But there's people that have been through significant physical, mental, emotional stresses and we are here because God upheld us. He upheld our life. And he preserved us for a reason. And I spoke to God about getting to that place because often we can focus on the difficulties and we can focus on the stresses and the problems. And when we do that, we do not allow ourselves to get to the secret place. And you can almost, there's times when you get to that place of intimacy where you have peace, but you don't take it back with you. So you're not able to transfer it to your circumstances. And the answer is to remain focused on the promises and the peace that you got in that secret place. And it should travel with you by design. Philippians 4. 6 to 7 says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and even the start of that there where it says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it's being thankful it's changing your attitude we can change our attitudes not necessarily change everything out there but we can change our attitudes 
And when we align our thoughts with God's, when we renew, renew our, our minds and we're able to think the way that God thinks, that allows him then to come in and intervene in a situation. That opens the door for him to actually change what's happening. Verse seven, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. So that peace that surpasses all understanding, because it's not logical. Logical is we look at what we have and we determine strategy from that. God is not a God that is restricted by logic and human thinking, thankfully. So his peace is different. And I was at a conference at the weekend via Zoom, the way of life these days. And they said, peace is not the absence of something. It is the presence of someone. So peace is the presence of someone. Not the, We often think of it as peace is without stress, without pain, without... But it's not... Peace is not reliant on circumstances. And when we look at the word for peace, shalom, shalom actually means the spirit that destroys chaos. Amen. And yeah, yeah. I love that, the spirit that destroys chaos. You wonder, you often hear people say, how can you be so calm in this situation? And it's because you have this peace and it says in that verse, it will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. So it takes your thought process, it takes your heart, it takes your emotions, and it puts it in, surrounded and enveloped by Jesus so that it's protected. Guard your heart. How often do we hear my mind is away or my heart's broken? If you want your heart to be guarded and your mind guarded against particularly... <laughs> those that could be classed as academic. Our minds are one of our greatest strengths and one of our greatest weaknesses because it propels us into thought processes that takes us down amazing journeys, but it also, it also can be a massive block to getting into the presence because we have to overcome our logic to get to the place of where God is. And I just felt that that in itself, when it talks about guarding our hearts, Guarding us, protecting us, saving us, rescuing us. And we are always in this world, surrounded by worldly things that cause stress, that cause anxiety, that cause fear. All of these things. But we are being told that we have the ability to remove those parts of us that react and hurt and take them to a place of safety. You don't need a car. You don't need to physically leave somewhere. You can retract into that presence of God, that place of safety. That's amazing. Because that's what we have in Christ. That's who we are. We have to get away from this belief about people and their power over us. We have to get away from this needing man's approval. And don't get me wrong, there's a big, big difference between being respectful of other people and being frightened of what they would say. We are absolutely called to be respectful of all people and who they are, to edify each other, to build each other up, to support and love each other. That is what God tells us to do. But if are walking with somebody or, or a group of people causes us to not be able to follow the path that God has, then there's a problem. And our plumb line, our reset needs to be in that place of intimacy with God. It needs to be in that place where nobody else is. And we can, we can see the evidence of that. Mark 4, 22 says, For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. And that sounds like a contradiction because we talk about being hidden and in the secret place. But what it's saying is who we are in that secret place and what we invest in 
will show in our fruits. So it says you will know them by their fruits. And I want peace and joy and patience and long suffering. I want all of these things because I need them to survive the paths that I have to walk through. I need them for my husband to survive because we are in close proximity. <laughs> we need that patience. I need to be able to respectfully listen to the opinion of my husband as gifted by God. But I need to be able to do that without my fleshy reaction that could cause us to be in a position where I would require an alibi because God asks us to be patient and move in love. And we have this, he would love first. And Sally and I joke, because there's times when I have to absolutely repeat loudly, he would love first, he would love first, he would love first, till the flesh in me that has great ideas of how to deal with that exact situation, it has to back down and submit under God. So we want to see the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. And it says, again, such things, there is no law. We see that in people. I'm a lot better at it now than I was. I have a, a long, long way to go. But Stuart even says he can see it happen. He can see it come over me now as this peace, as before he would have probably been trying to peel me off his head. He can see this peace and it almost looks like, okay. And you're walking away and you know, God's just going, don't do it, it's all right, we'll talk about this. We're gonna talk about this. And Stuart has to do it with me as well because he, you know, he can come in and get the head taken off him for something. <laughs> Whether it's his fault or not, we all do it if it's a bad day or we're reacting to something else. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that reacts to loved ones and those closest to me when something random's annoyed me. But as I spend more time more time in the word, more time in God's presence, I also find that the things that would have caused me to explode before don't really phase on me now. The things that I would be up in arms about and determined that this was never going to be, I kind of say, well, that's, that's not really my problem. That's God's problem. One of the greatest freedoms of life is actually realizing it's none of my business not my problem. It's amazing. Oh, he said this, he did that, blah, blah, blah. And I think, well, I'm so glad that that's really nothing to do with me. And even when it's in something directly in it, to me, I mean, we've all had times where we've been hurt by other people and we've all hurt other people. And I've been so blessed now that so many times when I've been hurting or I've been wounded, I've been able to say, do you know this? I'm so glad that I don't have to deal with this. This is between that person and God. This is between those that care for me. And God says that he'll deal with that. He'll manage that. He'll work that out. That's what he promises me. And from that, that's where we get our peace. I don't have to work it out. I don't have to try and figure out how I'm going to fix this thing. And there are times, yes, when we do have to take action, when we do have to sit down and talk to people, but that's where respect and that culture of love comes in so that it can be dealt with before God. And on that, it's Matthew 10, 26 says, don't be afraid of those who threaten you. Everything covered will be revealed and it's funny, it depends where you're at as to how you read that. How I read that is whatever I do and say in secret, God is standing beside me. So that helps me when I'm angry. It helps me when I'm hurt to absolutely draw down on my reaction because what I don't want to do, it says be angry and don't sin. 
what I don't want to do is go from being right in God's eyes to allowing something like pain or upset or, or dare I say it, offense to take me into the realm of sin. I don't want that because God is my hiding place. He is my refuge. He is my strength. He is my safety. And if I go in to fleshy reactions and if I go into, well, I'll show you, I can't do that in the secret place. I can't be that way in God's presence. So I have to come out of God's presence, out of his safety, out of his blessing and his covering to give somebody a piece of my mind. And let me tell you, there's not much of it's worth giving anybody much of unless God's in the middle of it. We have to actively pursue the secret place. We have to push for it. We have to go for it. We have to start forging pathways in our reactions. If you do something every day, that's the way your body's trained and conditioned to go. That's the way it's trained. And that's where addiction comes from because you keep doing something and the brain will always take the easiest path to an answer. So when we are frightened, we need to hit it with scripture about God protecting us, about God being our rescuer and our refuge. When we're anxious, do not be anxious. God's telling us, he's told us clearly. It says hundreds of times in the Bible, do not be afraid. That is a command. Do not be afraid. But if we don't trust who God is, if we don't have that intimate relationship, then it's gonna be much harder for us to throw ourselves in there. And we can't do that based on circumstances. You cannot have intimate relationship just when it's good. Mark and Amina got married recently. There's a wee line, there's a wee clause in there for better or for worse. And on your wedding day and at the start, you're like, oh, of course. You know, there might be a day when he doesn't pick his socks up. You know, it's fine. But I tell you, two people, speaking from experience, two people used to go in their own way, at their own pace, doing their own thing. <laughs> Getting put into the same pathway. <laughs> iron sharpens iron. Amen. But there are times... <laughs> I said to my granda the other day, I says, I really don't feel qualified to talk about marriage because I've only started. We'll be married 10 years in January. And I really feel like I'm just learning how it works 10 years in. It's about compromising. And it is about finding the balance between Stuart is not my source. He's not my comfort. God is. Stuart is not built the way that he would need to be built. Like God is to give me what I need. And I absolutely, you know, he is who God has for me and I'm who God has for him. <laughs> but we are not each other's sources because we found that when we slipped into that place of being each other's sources, it was an absolute disaster. I am not here to meet his need. He is not here to meet my need. But when we are both aligned with God as God as our source, our safety, our refuge and our strength, we pull that cart together like never before. There's a unity. Even in, in our church family here, it's like there's a unity that has to come in, but we cannot look to each other as the source. We can't fall and die when somebody upsets us. We equally can't launch at each other and attack each other when they're not meeting a need in us because that's not what each other are for. When we are all hooked up to the source, our safety, our strength, we can come to a place where we can all pull together and we can cheer each other on and fight for one another and stand by one another and give that help when it's needed. 
but it ultimately always has to lead back to God. It always has to lead back to your source. And it's in that secret place. It's how we pray. It's how we talk to God when there's nobody else there. And we will have to walk through valleys because that's life. But I tell you something, character and strength is forged in a valley. It doesn't grow. You don't inherit a level of strength that you get through walking through the valley. There's a muscle building. You don't, when I mean, you think of a big muscly person, you know, when a baby's born of that muscly person that doesn't come out <laughs> like a wee muscly man, it has to work itself. And when we can walk through the valley, but know that God is our strength and our source, when we have that safety blanket around us, we walk that valley better. We walk it stronger. And we come out different the other side. Last year, somebody had a vision for me, actually, and it was of me walking through a valley. And I had no sword. I had no shield had nothing but this white dress on, but Jesus was walking with me. You, you know that way you wish you prayed into it more. <laughs> and two weeks later, I woke up in the resuscitation department of Aunt Maria Hospital. And there's nothing I could have done there. There's abs, I mean, I, I was unconscious. <laughs> I was in bad physical shape. I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't sit up and say, right guys, let's discuss the medical options <laughs> to get this whole thing turned around, super awkward. I had no shield, I had no sword. I couldn't fight my way out of it. I couldn't talk my way out of it. But God was there and he positioned the people that he needed to be there. so that I could continue in life. And through that valley of rehabilitation and everything afterwards, I have to say that I have forged more character in myself and more of an understanding of who and what God is in the last year, because it's nearly a year now, in the last year of my life than I have ever had, because I had to, because I was in a valley. I could have lay down and just give up, but it's not really in my nature. And it was in those many, many days, weeks and months of the secret place that I had. Alan talks about going and having that time in that office that he has at home. And there's such a peace, there's such a strengthening, there's such an intimacy that really, it, it's almost like when you come out of it and people are panicking about things, you kind of almost have a moment where you look and you think, why are they so anxious? You nearly ask yourself, should I be worried about this? Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. The reason we do not fear, the reason we do not be dismayed, that we are not anxious, that we should not be in a state of not coping, is because of who God is. So when we are overwhelmed, it says, when I am overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, because it's a higher place of being and understanding. It's not here because logic here relies on what we see and what we hear. And oh my goodness, God forgive the media for what has been poured out upon us. And we take precautions and we do what really we should have been doing in the first place, washing our hands and not slobbering all over each other. But my hope and my safety isn't in washing my hands. 
that's wise and we use wisdom. But my hope and my safety is in God and God alone. We have to be wise and we have to apply. Very bossy today, have to, have to. We should try to apply the truth that God has told us in his word into our lives because we, sh we should try to find a way to live as God tells us to live. Our spirituality should flow into every area of our life, every area of our life, so that there's peace in every area of your life, so that there's strength in every area of your life. It says about going to work and working as if you were working for God doing it in excellence. And I find my work's much easier when I'm praising God through it and when I'm asking his opinion on things. It begins at home, Psalm 101. David's talking about how he will be careful and lead a life of integrity in his own home. It starts at home. We seek God in that secret place and the more we build ourselves up in God, the more that we seek his counsel, the more that we're able to press into him and get that joy and that peace and that love, it will overflow. What you're full of will come out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're dwelling and focusing on the news and the media and the virus, that's what's going to consume you. That needs to be peripheral. We need to be watching and focused on God. We need to be focused on Jesus. We need to be focused on what's happening there. And everything else falls into place. There's a perspective is needed. A perspective is needed. When we focus on the waves, we're going to sink. When we focus on the chaos... We're drawn into it. Chaos is infectious. But so is peace. I would just encourage everybody today. Before you start your day, find that place. Get yourself to that place. And it's like leaning back into a waterfall when you sit in your chair. It's just leaning back. And you feel the waves of peace coming down. You have to turn your head off because in that peace, the enemy's always going to try and stop you from getting to that place of peace because he can't do anything to you when you're there. He will always convince you, don't go to that place. You don't have time. You need to do this. You need to do that. He will fill your day with busyness to stop you from having even five minutes in the secret place. Jesus himself went to God and cried. And his sweat was blood. He was so distressed. But he went to God. He took it to God. And he stood up at the end of that and everyone else was sleeping and he went, right, let's go. He didn't be like, any minute now, any minute now, God's going to swoop in here and stop this. He said, right, I'm good. He got himself to a place in the Father where he was, he was good and he would manage to do what he had to do. And so many things that people are facing today we need the strength to do what we have to do and walk the paths that we have to walk. Your strength is in God. Your rescue and your refuge is in God. Your safety is in God. It does not rely on circumstances. It is not impacted or influenced by what's happening in the world, what's happening in your life, what's happening in your relationships. God is not moved out of his goodness by the events of the world. 
He has not moved or changed out of who he is because of what's going on here. It is our position to bring him to here to intervene, to bring heaven down because what is established in heaven, we need to establish on earth. But to do that, if the enemy keeps us anxious and freaking out and stressed and sore and frightened, we can't move into that peace. One of our greatest weapons is understanding who God is and moving into that peace regardless of circumstances. I want us to just take a wee minute today just to stand before God or sit before God, whatever works. And just ask for that place of intimacy. Just lean back into that waterfall of peace. And you'll find that many of your difficulties and many of your troubles will start to dissolve. And that's not that it's just because you're not looking at them. It's that where the peace of God is, nothing can overtake that because it surpasses all understanding. Father God, we just stand before you now and we just bring ourselves before you now. Lord, we are in righteous pursuit of your presence. Father, we acknowledge your presence and the strength that lies in it. God, we give you permission to strip the worldly restraints off us that demand stress to be there, that demand anxiety, that logic tells us has a right. God, we just ask that you align us now with your will and your way in your presence. Lord, that we would know peace in every area of our lives. God, that your kindness and your grace would overwhelm us. God, that seeds would be planted under the shadow of your wings that would just bear fruit. No matter where we are, what we're doing, Lord, that we would know that even during the day, even in the midst of this chaos around us, Lord, that we can stop and call down your presence. Mm. If anybody's wanting prayer, let us know. There's such a heavy presence of God. It's just that song coming into my head. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. 
You are holy. Just feel like God's downloading a lot of peace, just washing over everybody now. Just open your hands and allow him to take the stresses, allow him to take the issues or the problems that would try and rob you of peace, because it is theft. Jonathan's going to lead us in worship for another song here. Just as we do that, just wanted to say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We speak blessing over everybody here. We bless you, we bless your families, we bless your workplaces, we bless your entire sphere of relationships. We speak blessing, we speak life. And absolutely God will bless his people. 